Welcome to Abiding Place. It is November 25th, 2019. So, so when we went in as our bench, which we, we do before our call to see if Holy Spirit shows us something that um, we can, a place that we can meet or a topic we can start um, getting new revelation on. Um, so today, the first thing that I had gotten, and I didn't know any any history for anybody else, was um, I just got the word intention um, versus um, random. And that, that opened up a whole bunch of conversation for us as far as uh, the intention of heaven. Okay. Yeah, and we were thinking about um, just, we just began to sort of engage Father about the whole understanding of his intentions and how sometimes, I mean, when we come into that place, where we consider intention and the intention of Father's heart in a thing, it can open up a whole, a whole uh, scenario or a, a broad, big picture um, to something that we might have considered as something man mundane, like I'm just going to the post office to post some some stuff, and then, but the real intent of Father is something different, uh, because we get there and there's someone that. Father wants us to, to speak to or whatever it is. I'm just saying that when we engage, what's your, what's your intent, Father, on things that if we're going to open it up more. So we just began to consider what the word intent means and what intention is. And we felt like we would bring it to everybody. It's with us now to, you know, just to engage it a bit and see what you get from that and see where we go from there. I don't know if you wanted to add to that, Quinn. I'll add a, a, a second. Um, we were also, I had also asked, what's the difference between intention and desire? And so we started um, talking about motive. Yeah, and I, I think the context was for this time that we are together as the abiding place. Um, we desire to you know God's intention for us, you know, on so many different scales, but even just for this exact meeting right here, right now. And the picture I got kind of right at the very end of our discussion was um, of how relationship is, is how we know what God's intention is. And I had a picture of a group a small group seated in a circle with Papa Yeshua. I, they kind of merge for me sometimes in heaven as I, as I engage um, sitting among us and our, we, we are coming with intention to engage the father to find out what his intention for us is as uh, uh, I think Michelle or Kathy kind of put it that way. And I thought that was brilliant. So that is the picture that I kind of had. And so if we can intentionally seek the intention of God, I think we won't go wrong. <laughs> yeah, so Kath, do you want to lead us in there? Okay, and I think um, I had also mentioned that the abiding place is where we receive the um, intention. Yes, exactly. So we can meet there. Thank you, Lord, for opening up the door for us to meet with you and dine with you.
And so we, um, we invite all the heavenly beings to assist us in this um, new revelation that we're receiving tonight. Holy Spirit, Spirit Jesus is there to re greet us as always. The Father, Lady Wisdom, her handmaidens, and the seven spirits of God and the cloud of witnesses and the men in white linen. So we, um, we're going to meet there in Father's heart to learn more about intention. I'm so glad you said that about the Father's heart because as you were, when you started, you said, you know, you're asking to open the door for us to come in. And I found myself just like that um, back in the realm of perfection. And we were together in a group in the Father's heart in, protect, in, in perfection a couple of, couple of meetings ago. So that really resonated. Bam. So if anybody sees anything, hears anything, smells anything, we want to use all of our senses when we're here in perfection. Please feel free to share. And welcome Johnny, Johnny Lee. Thank you. <laughs> You know, I, I feel as though I'm breathing in honey, the scent of honey. Mm -hmm. And I, I can taste, you know, it's just so sweet. It's, uh, you know, nothing really on earth that could describe it. The best, best way I can describe it is honey. <laughs> Love it. Did you say breathing it in, Jill? Yes, I did. <laughs> but the scent of it. I, yes, I can breathe. Right. The scent of it. And, and you know, sometimes when you breathe something in, you can taste it. Yep. That's what was happening. So let's breathe in the honey. Mm. So I guess I was thinking about um, a honeybee and what the honeybee's intention is. And it's obviously to pollinate. Um, and so I was thinking about our, our, um, ingrained intention that we were given in the beginning. Mm. You know, the intent of Father's heart is pure honey. <laughs> and it says, you know, like honey in the rock, um, you, you know, your words, like honey on my, on my lips, isn't it? Is that scripture? I think, I don't know if it's in the Psalms. It sounds like something David would say, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> yeah. And so I was just getting that all the intention of the heart of the Godhead is, is like honey. Sweet.
in Psalm 119, verse 103, David says, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey. Yeah. And then there's another one that says, Your name is like honey on my lips. Pleasant words are a honeycomb. That's Proverbs 16, verse 24. So it's really, really wonderful. And that sweetness that we can experience, you know, through our olfactory senses or whatever. Um, I experience it in my body. I, I actually have a, a sense in my body now whenever I'm engaging in perfection and it's, it's a deep peace on a, it's a gut level mm -hmm. uh, of peace. And that's like a sweet, it, you know, it's not like the sweet taste on my tongue, but it's, it's a sweet feeling in my sensation in my body. Of, well, if you look at Proverbs 16, 24, in the different versions, the one says, gracious words are like a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and health to the body. Mm. You know what, it also uh, flowed to me uh, when you're speaking earlier, Kathy, um, that I got that uh, the intent of fathers, that I got that father, he judges according to the intent of our heart. Yes, he does. Yes. And that's in our thoughts. That's our our heart and our and our mind. And that's, that's why that. and that's why it can always bring it can always it always his always intention is always to bring life. Um because sometimes the intent of our heart is is pure, but the result, you know, may not be or you know the fruit may not appear good if I can put it that way but the intent of the heart is and so father judges according to the intent of the heart now sometimes it might appear good on the outside but the intent of the heart isn't correct but even if the intent of the heart isn't correct father's intentions are so sweet towards us that there's no you know there's we know there's no condemnation but it just lifts he just lifts us up and so the intent of our heart is so key isn't it I really think there's a lot of uh, revelation to um, to grasp from this, to um, get hold of. Yeah, it's a beautiful subject. It's a beautiful thing. Everything happens in 
the thoughts, whether it's the thoughts of the heart or, or the mind before action comes and it, even when we react instinctually, it might be a subconscious thought, but there's, there's a deep intention that's always being played out. We don't, nothing is truly random in our actions. There, there was a thought somewhere on some level. There was an intention somewhere on some level. This permeates all of our life. Do you sense it goes it, it goes into a deeper, a much deeper place of intimacy when we're looking at intent of the heart and intent of Father's heart than what we might call faith? I think it's deeper. It's because it's remember, remember, in order the only in order to to um, in order to, to be able to know the intention, we have to have that intimate relationship with the Lord. So instead of it being like, "Why well, I, I just have faith in it," well, why do you have? Fun? I mean, what is the intention of the faith that you have in it? You know. It's like another step. Yeah, and that's really key because it's in that place that the crucible of the fire, you know, our, our, our stuff gets tested. But the intent of our heart gets, gets tested by that. So we could be at a distance and say, well, I have faith in that promise and I have faith in God and I trust God for this and so on and be at a distance or, or we can get close to where the crucible becomes when we're, we're wanting to be uh, we're wanting to have this intimacy where the intent of our heart, we re we, we're open, you know, for the intent of our heart to be seen for what it is. And, and we're open to know the intent of Father's heart and to carry out the intent of Father's heart. Exactly. Like the intent of Father's heart is for us to walk in health, let's say. And so if you're, um, if you're having, you know, faith to believe for healing, let's say, um, but it's a deeper thing to, to know that the intention of God's heart is for you to walk in health, regardless of the circumstances. Because so many people, you know, they take a different path. They, you know, they, they believe, but, but then why are you doing what you're doing if, if you do? if you get my drift. Yes, I catch what you mean. Yeah. Well, right at the beginning, it seemed like such a clear connection to me that um, the Father's intention is perfection for all, for everyone. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Right? And this is this is the restoration of all things again. This is Yep, no decay. Right. And this is yeah. our where we belong. And we dwell in perfection and perfection dwells in us and that intention living with the intention of living from that place and bringing that perfection just being just by being in it we affect our the atmosphere around us
you know, let's just continue to um, engage this with the, the five senses. And uh, if you have anything to share on that, please feel free. Everybody, everybody has something to contribute. We embrace everyone's spirit here. I feel a lightness like floating, which I've also had before um, when we've engaged in the heart of the. I was seeing that too, and I was seeing everybody else floating that, that <laughs> knew the, intent, the intention. And then I was thinking about how glorious it would be if everybody were floating. <laughs> and then I was thinking about where we all think we need food to eat and all these other things, where I don't even know if that was even part of the intention than the beginning. Yeah, like for pleasure, not for need. <laughs> yeah. I was just imagining what it would be like if everybody were on the same page. And I was also getting that um, intention, God's intention of angels, let's say, and what major uh, roles they play in our lives and how we are, his intention was for us to um, have much closer involvement with them. Amen. Um, right before you said that, I saw, I, I, you know, I feel the float, you know, very floaty things like that and light, kind of peaceful. But um, at the same time, I, I saw us in this field full of like what look like red roses that are open and beautiful. And um, Looking at them, they almost look like they're made from rubies because they just have so much light in them, but they're, but they're not, they're flower flowers. Anyway, so um, there was, I saw an angel like pick these flowers and then hand them to me and then to each of us. And I just thought it was interesting that you brought up angels, you know, right before I saw that, so. Well, yeah, like, um, I mean, can you imagine? I'm, well, yeah, what a, what a word, right? <laughs> For us to actually, you know, be given flowers and things. I mean, if we just, I mean, that's the intention of the Father's heart, I believe. Yeah, I agree, absolutely. But 
yeah, it just opens up a whole world of or universe of opportunity. I wonder if those um, if those red living stone roses, <laughs> ruby stone roses, are the are diff are expressions of the intentions of Father's heart, and that we could just take them in. You know, like you get infused knowledge on a thing, right? When you just take it in. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take it in because remember also we're talking about elements being uh, beings. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, the ruby flower bean thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and the rose is alive. <laughs> it's alive, yay. It's alive, yes. So how are we going to infuse it in us? Are we going to eat it or are we going to... Um, just kind of put it in our spirits or what are we going to do? You know, I, I saw my, myself eat it. <laughs> I, didn't okay. have, I didn't have a chance to think, think about that's, it. That's just why that. I said that. It was the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> All right. So should we, do we want to indulge together? <laughs> we, we can. Feast time. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for the intentions of your heart. We're just taking it in. Mm. That we may. The rose, rep mm. the rose represents beauty and love and passion. Mm hmm. And what I'm sensing about the intentions of Father's heart is that they're so, I'm sensing so much of the gentleness, kindness, the tender heartedness of his intentions. Mm. And the pleasure and joy he has mm. watching us. Oh, my mouth is watery. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoying the, his his um gift. Mm. You said ruby roses. Yes. Yeah. So I received life giving wisdom. Sorry, what was that, Law? She said ruby roses. Yes. So I received life giving wisdom in those roses. Life giving wisdom. Yes. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. That open more water works coming. <laughs> <laughs> As we all eat our roses, then the beautiful fragrance of those roses will flow through us. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
And we're changed into oneness with the intention of Father's heart. And it just becomes such a flow. As I was, um, after I, in, in, you know, took it in, um, and we just we were just describing different things about the intention nature, um, and uh, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Well, I just read that um, um, in early cultures, it was believed that rubies held the power of life. Yeah. Wow. And that's, yeah. Wow. Of course. I didn't know that. Mm. I just think they're beautiful. <laughs> because they looked at the, the color of it, you know, like um, the blood that mm. fills our veins. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I now remember what it was I was going to say, because when I took it in, it became like living water in me. And so the, the, the intentions of Father's heart coming into us, it just, um, it's like makes our water sweet, because the intentions of Father are sweet. It makes all the things that we've seen so far about the intentions, what the nature of the intentions of Father, Father it's like, changes the waters within us as well so that those living waters flow out of us and we'll find ourselves as i see like in a completely different dimension of how we relate with everything around us and it's not and it, it's like a different dimension where it's not where nothing is mundane because everything could have an expression of the intention of father's heart If you know what I mean, you know, like, like nothing, like when we're walking in this place in, in the intention of Father's hearts even becoming our intentions because we're engaging for that intention to be understood and so on, that, um, that sweetness and that nature flows out of us and also the purpose, the motive for a, a day uh, with regard to the, the realms of heaven opening up around us with people and things. Um, so it's not like business as usual. And as you were sharing, I was seeing um, an infusion of we're walking in and experiencing that infusion in us and then saw, um, uh, was it Peter's shadow? When you were saying it would then affect others. Um, just like um the verses with peter's shadow yeah that's wonderful and that's exactly that's manifest sonship right that's the restoration of all things us as rivers of living water yeah that's carrying the intent of father's heart yeah his source, him as our source, and so us becoming a source of life for others from him in us.
isn't <clears throat> is is read the uh, the spirit of the Lord? Yes. I, I think that's also connected. You know, to eat eat deeper from that. Yeah. You know, feast feast more on that. You can never get enough. I just saw a butterfly, a beautiful butterfly um, with just many different colors. And as you had said, Jill, that the, the red that we were being, the roses that we were shown that we took in as the expressions of the intent of Father's heart and then fusion of no, knowledge on that, that I, and you said that uh, the spirit of the Lord is, is red, that we should engage on that. And I saw this beautiful butterfly and then what came to me was everywhere Jesus went, he brought freedom. And that's that the spirit of the Lord, his dominion does. Oh, yes. It's, yes. Mm. Yes, it's good. And so once, so again, the intention of Father's heart is always to bring freedom everywhere. Yes. Yes. You know, as we're becoming also more aware of everything around us and being a being and about how to relate with the beings around us. Uh, what came back to me again was uh, someone once said that we never, never consider, let's put this way, in the day, don't consider any person that you meet or any situation uh, just a haphazard thing. Treat it with the intent of purpose from Father. For the last while, a thing that keeps being brought up to me as, as something to, to meditate on, and I've been spending some time with it most mornings, is everything is here to love me. Um, he is in all things and through all things and holding everything together. And so we're literally surrounded by his love. And it might not look like love and it might not feel like love, <laughs> but his intention is to use all things for my good. So it's so funny that you said that because I'm sitting on this leather um, recliner chair thing. And I was um, honoring the, the cow and I felt that the cow was very sweet and that, um, that it was very <laughs> loving Ugh, and I'm sitting on it. <laughs> That's awesome. Sensing that same thing that you just said, my oh, goodness, that it was loving me. And it didn't hold a grudge that it became a, couch either i mean it was um <laughs> you know god created certain hides for us to keep us warm and you know and then that i'm i shouldn't feel guilty that it's now a couch 
but um, that it loves me. Yeah, that's right. Um, one of the local indigenous creation stories uh, where I live talks about when, you know, the creator created the world, creator created the animals, and he called, you know, the animals and the creatures, the, the created beings and said, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to make mankind and stuff. And the rest of them volunteered. The trees said, oh, we'll, we'll help so they can build stuff. And, and the plant said, oh, we'll help so they can eat stuff. And the, and the, some of the animals, you know, will help. And, and so it was actually their, their desire and their initiative to, um, to love mankind, which is, I always found that so, it, it can so easily go with the eco ethics, which have a huge potential for very godly thinking, but it can become just a big guilt fest, right? Um, yeah, yeah, totally. And, so I like that way of thinking. Yeah. Yeah, I find that that because that is God's intention. I mean, truly, it's God's heart. We are His. We are His chosen. We are His masterpiece. You know. So. And so the the thing is, and and within the indigenous story too, it was just just that they remember us. Just that they are, you know, it, they don't demand anything. They don't demand payment or guilt or anything, but gratitude right um of and that's why there are the you know the little rituals or whatever you know i've i've got a fireplace now and i've started saying thank you trees <laughs> i'm building the fire because i am thankful yep and uh, for the wood anyway that's keeping exactly. you warm as you're burning it <laughs> yeah yeah so the least i can do is and acknowledging that it's here to love me and being grateful for that love. I think that that's one of the, the most powerful experiences you can have encountering um, heaven is when you experience that love um, and you wake up and it's like, oh my gosh, it was such a powerful experience that you go around hugging everything because it just, everything loved you. It's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if we can experience that every second of every day and night? Well, and that's why we're, we're shifting our perception, right? And it's, you know, it'd be lovely if it was instant, but it's not. But as we are increasing our awareness, our awareness will keep increasing. <laughs> yeah, and it takes all of us to contribute to this puzzle <clears throat> to see the big picture. Because I, I would not have gotten all this on my own. Mm -hmm. At least this quickly. Maybe Holy Spirit would have revealed it to me in the, the next five years. <laughs> You know, it's been wonderful to engage together.
So um, when Jill saw the big field full of these roses and, and Jesus handed each one of us one, there's like a gazillion left over. So I was wondering what we could, um, if we can um, like distribute the rest of them to the rest of the Ecclesia or um, somehow infuse or um, petition possibly the rest of these to be infused in everyone else into humanity. As soon as you started saying that, I saw us with arms full and throwing <laughs> bush. <laughs> and I guess I, I like I didn't see a multitude or anything receiving them, but just the act of of throwing them out there for them to land where they're meant to. Yeah, yeah, because I certainly want to share this. I don't want to, you know. I think everybody needs to get infused with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds so good that the whole of the creation would 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 be able to identify with the motives and the intents of Father's heart, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I agree. I, I agree. Should we gather them up and and just how should we release them? Well, I was th thinking about the angel. Um, so, Jill, what was that angel that you saw? You know, I don't know who it was. I just know it was, you know, an angel. And what was he doing? <clears throat> he was picking uh, the the roses and handing them to us. Oh, that's right. He was the one that was doing that. Yeah, yeah that's when I had talked about our involvement with angels. Exactly. Um, so maybe we should commission all of the guardian angels for each that's assigned to each person mm -hmm. to um, commission them to go to get one and bring one to their their human. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good idea. That is good, yeah. Because we know they all have one. <laughs> or more. <laughs> or more. <laughs> At least one, right? Yeah, because we want the revelation of this to spread. We want the revelation. Yeah, I think intents of Father's heart and heart and about engaging it and understanding it and knowing it. We want it to spread because everybody knew before they came into their mother's womb, and we want it to be activated, right? Right. So could the guard, is this a function the guardian angels could actually do according to their, their function? Well, when I was being shown how much more um, our involvement was intended to be with our angels, yes. uh -huh. um, I think that mm -hmm. that would be, you know, because I was thinking about when he had, brought that to my attention about the involvement with the angels. I was thinking about all the angels that served um, Jesus during that time mm -hmm. um, that he was being tempted um, mm -hmm. and how involved they were with him. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And how involved they they are are were intended to be with us, but it seems like there were there were multitudes of them, not just one. So maybe it's a different uh, angel assigned to do this. Well, let's look and see. If we're not sure, we just do our best, and we know because God's intention is for us to. <laughs> Learn and grow and it's safe. And yeah, we'll just practice engaging the angels. We could just say the angels that will carry 
this to the people who were asked them to do that. Or carry these, these um, red roses, these beautiful living beings that uh, they carry the, the, the intent of Father's heart, the revelation of it, the infused knowledge of it. The, these angels that would be their function to carry them to the people that we would agree for them to do it. And it would become like a real flow in, in the earth, especially among the ecclesia. It'll suddenly open up to them and among the whole of creation, it'll begin to open up. Amen. Amen. And that there's just a real um, awakening. Yeah. Of the consciousness level of intent of intention. Yes. of intent of the heart mm -hmm. where pe people start at looking within to, mm -hmm. to, to understand the intent of their heart mm. because I, I, you know, I just think it's very timely. Mm -hmm. and, and another thing about it is that when we can engage and experience the intent of Father's heart, then we won't misunderstand when we read a scripture and think that God you know, that father would harm somebody or judge somebody, be judgmental, anything like that, because we've engaged the intent of his heart. We know him, you know. We can't be led astray by, by something you read in the scripture that's written incorrectly and that actually indicates father's going to destroy you type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, doom and gloom. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so let's do Armageddon. That. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> All right, so is anybody seeing these angels or we just ask for them? Well, like I say, I saw us with our arms arms full and just throwing them into the air and then it's like a wind came and, and took them so it, to me that's the angels oh, okay. taking them and bringing them where they need to go okay. cool they just carry they just carried them off yeah, yeah. is everyone that. in agreement with that oh yes that's good i saw them throw them in the air like like that as well Good. How about you, Laurel and uh, John Lee? Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So thank you, angels, for taking those beautiful, beautiful and revelations of intention of Father's heart and what intention actually means. And we thank you for spreading it into the earth. And you know what I just saw? I saw like this red, like red hue, um, like just covering the earth. It's like, like a red cloud, as it were. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm. Yeah. A cloud of roses. And I was seeing the dew drops of the cloud. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. And I was hearing like the sound of like a frequency of love and of like an awakening to love going on. Awakening to true love. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
I was actually seeing these angels come into the meetings where believers were gathering together with these roses, with these, to release them. That's awesome. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I would, I feel complete. I don't know about anybody else. I'm still enjoying the feelings, but I don't feel like there's more we need to do. Just that this is gonna just keep going deeper in us. Mm. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Yes, it's awesome. <laughs> okay. 